Today I'm going to be building a keyboard using the ACR Pro Alice Plus kit sent to me from Akko Gear. This is a gasket mounted bare bones kit with a hot swap PCB and when opening the box I immediately found some case foam and an aluminum plate on the top as well as the manual. Underneath was the keyboard and after removing the plastic sleeve I noticed that the stabilizers had been pre-lubed and was leaking underneath the polycarbonate plate. I didn't expect to find it in this state, but it wasn't a big deal to me since I'll be switching to the aluminum one and cleaning this up. Aside from that though, I already love how this keyboard case looks and it feels decently heavy as well, since the colorful badge on the back is a weight. According to the product page, this frosted case is made of CNC cut acrylic and features an ergonomic Alice style layout, pink and white clip and stabilizers made of palm, and a USB-C port on the right side. As you've already seen, the bottom has a stainless steel weight, the model name, and rubber feet. Included were some additional accessories such as a keycap and switch puller, extra silicone gaskets, a spare daughter board connector, a white coiled USB-C cable, and keyboard feet. I know this is a very RGB heavy keyboard, so I'm going to plug it in quickly to take a look. I just want to note that these lights are actually very solid in person and not flickering at all, but they appear this way on video due to frequency sync between the light and camera. I know I'll probably be turning these off after the build is done, but the amount of light it provides is pretty nice. To begin the Alice build, I put down my rose pink American Haptics work mat. The first thing I want to do is remove the stabs and take a look at the lubing situation. I was pleasantly surprised to see that these had TPU stems, which is an upgrade to Akko's usual stabs. Seeing that the lube was leaking out of the stabilizers, I'm not sure that I'll want to add more. I'll see after I start adding keycaps and switches if I want to add some grease via syringe to the wires. While I'm at this step, I do want to note that this PCB and keyboard also support screw-in stabs, which is really neat. I won't be making this upgrade for today's video, but I'm definitely interested in doing this in the future. Now that the stabilizers are out, I brought out my Fantic E1 Pro Mini Precision Screwdriver. I turned the keyboard over and removed the 12 screws holding the top and bottom case together. I also noticed the weighted badge on the bottom had a protective film over it, so I removed that as well. Then I carefully turned everything over again and removed the top case. The PCB is still connected to the daughter board, so I disconnected it to have full access to the PCB sandwich. I put the bottom case to the side and used my precision screwdriver again to remove the screws holding the PCB sandwich together. There are standoffs underneath that the screws go into as well. I lifted the polycarbonate plate away and revealed the Poron plate foam and PCB. There's also a silicone switch pad sitting on top of the PCB, which was a little thinner than I expected, but still really cool that it's included. It's not time for me to add the case foam yet, but I did want to take it out to test how it would fit over the bottom of the PCB. I love how Akko included all of these layer mods. Now it's time to exchange the plate for the aluminum one. The kit does come with extra silicone gaskets, but I decide to just transfer the ones from the polycarbonate plate over. These just slip right off and I was easily able to transfer them without any issues. The PCB sandwich is ready to put back together, so I reinserted the standoffs and screwed the screws back in. There are four of these holding the layers together. I grabbed the bottom case and inserted the case foam. I noticed there were some adhesive strips included on the foam, but I didn't feel that they were necessary, so I left them as is. I reconnected the daughter board cable to the PCB, placed the PCB sandwich into place, and placed the top case back on top. I turned everything over again and screwed the rest of the screws back in. I turned it over and popped all the stabilizers back in as well. Now that I'm done, I removed my work mat since I'm finished with all of the main modifications I'll be doing for this keyboard. Switches are next. For this build, I'll be using CS Crystal switches, which were also sent to me from Akko. These are a linear switch with full polycarbonate housing and are very budget friendly at about $15 USD for 45 switches. 
I lube these with 205G0, GPL106 on the springs, and I think these are super smooth and I'm excited to use them. When adding these switches, I didn't have any tolerance issues and all the switches went in easily. Sometimes it can be a tight fit with an aluminum plate, but this definitely didn't cause any problems here. Here's how everything looks so far. My thoughts so far is that this was such an easy keyboard to work with, and despite the lube leaking out of the stabilizers at the beginning, Akko made it really easy to create a quality build on a budget by including all the case and plate mods. I love that this is a hot swap keyboard, as I definitely have plans to use this board to show off more of my keycap and switch collection. It's now time to finally add the keycaps. I decided to go with DSA Milkshake from Novel Keys. I bought this set a few months ago and I went with the Weirdo Kit, which has unique legends. I also bought the Extra Fruit Novelty keycaps. These are made of PBT with dye sublimated legends. Just to note, in case you haven't built an Alice style keyboard before, Akko put this great reference on the back of the kit box that indicates what keys go where. As you can see, this keyboard has a split spacebar and two B keys. I did not purchase the Milkshake Spacebar kit, so I did have to pull these split spacebars out of another set. I wasn't really sure what colors I wanted to use for some of the keycaps, so I decided to place the number keys and alphas first. After placing the spacebars, I was finally able to test out the stabilizers, which I thought were pretty decent regardless of the lubing situation. The TPU stems really did help with the wire rattle, so I think I'll give this a go as stock before I commit to either lubing the wire some more or switching them out for screw and stabs. After placing more of the colored keycaps, I wanted to add an artisan keycap to go with the milkshake theme. I commissioned Ami Pond last year for this handmade cow artisan keycap and I thought she'd look perfect with this build, so I added her to my escape key. As for the last three keys on the right, I went with three of the fruit novelties, including the pink, even though it didn't quite match the space bars, but I felt that they were similar enough to go well together anyway. I also changed out the function key for a milk icon novelty. Now this build is done. This is the second Alice style keyboard I'll be adding to my collection, and I can't wait to try it out for the sound test. Overall, I think that ACR Pro Alice Plus is such an awesome, budget-friendly, bare-bones kit. At the time of filming this video, you can get it on Gear's website at $99 USD, which is pretty good for a kit that comes with plate options, a weight, and other mods like foam and TPU stabilizer stems. All you'll have to do is purchase switches and keycaps and you'll be ready to build a new keyboard. I'll leave a link down below for those who are interested. It's also nice to see a unique layout like the Alice to be more readily available to beginners and with it including a hot swap PCB, you won't need to bring out the soldering iron and can shorten the amount of time it takes to assemble everything. It took me less than an hour to complete, not including the time it took to lube the switches. Speaking of the switches, these crystal switches are pretty affordable as well, coming in at about 33 cents per switch. They do not come factory lube though, so I don't recommend them stock if you choose to go this route because they could be a bit scratchy without any lube. And if you like RGB, they'll go really well with these too. As for the keycaps, I'll always love any artisans I commission from Omipon, and this one in particular matches the milkshake keycaps very nicely and fit the theme I was going for. I'm a little upset I didn't purchase the Space Bars kit for the main key set though, but at the time I didn't have any plans to put it on an Alice layout. I'm really glad I was able to find some from another set though, as I really like the look of the weirdo base on this style keyboard. Like I mentioned last time, I'll now be including two sound tests at the end, so if you want to hear what this keyboard sounds like, make sure to keep watching! If you like this keyboard build and want to see more like it, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel! I have a good handful of builds ready to go, so I'll be sharing another video next week featuring one of them. Thank you to Gear for sponsoring this video, and thank you all for watching!